Oh, this is much better. <laughs> <laughs> What up everybody, my name is Stan Smith from Iron Sharp K9 and we have a guest here who's done some fun stuff. Um, I know people have seen the stuff that we do with our dogs and we have a lot of fun and we're going to start learning how to make it more precise because we're going to start doing some French ring stuff and he's going to tell us what he likes about French ring, what he got into it, how long he's been doing it and then you're going to see the steps that it's going to take Boot to become a French ring dog. And you've worked him a couple times, do you think he has what it takes to do it? He definitely there's definitely a lot of potential there. You know, it's 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 uh it's a project, see how far you can get, you know, um, building the dog up and being realistic on what the dog can do, you know. You gotta have you gotta have that be realistic on what your dog's ability and what you may lack, he or she may lack. But as long as you're okay with that, I mean you can go as far as you can get. That's what we wanna hear. So what got you into French training? And for the people that don't know what French ring is, give them a brief, not in-depth, but a yeah. brief summary of kind of what goes on. So it is definitely this dog pork from France, uh, from France, from France. Um, the way I look at it, it it's uh, it's definitely a heavily involved decoy sport, which is what I like. I've been decoying for a while, so I really like how the decoy is very involved. Basically, the, the point of the decoy is to take points from the dog handler team, um, expose any holes in the training. And uh, you know, try to take points. Obviously, fairly within the rules, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. So the decoy has a lot more uh, interaction with the dogs. Not more just standing there taking the bites. You can actually certain moves to make the dog miss, take points away, like to expose any holes in the train, make the dog bite early, uh, make the dog on the line of departure before the dog's released, break the line basically. So you really get inside a dog's head, but you know, it, it definitely makes you a better decoy, makes you a better trainer too. Start reading dogs, start reading behavior, and and, and you know help you understand. You know, become a better trainer and a better you know decoy trainer down the road. Have you de have you handled as well as decoyed in French ring or not? I started to a little bit. I did have a dog. I started um, handling, working. It never got to that point, but I did focus more of my time on decoying, which is what I enjoy doing. And it's been fun because we get a lot of people come out here and they say they can decoy and they want to help us out and stuff like that and then they're like well what do you want me to do <laughs> it's like well if you were going to help us out you would be able to tell us what we need to do with our dogs and he came out helped us with creed and again we're doing some stuff with boots it's been pretty cool have you ever worked an australian shepherd before in bite work no no that <laughs> first time <laughs> so when so when we brought about the first time what was you thinking initially <laughs> i mean i've worked some off breed dogs and i've seen them work in, in sports so it wasn't like all right the dog has a drive wants to do it Cool. Yeah. You know, has the nerve to do it. All right, let's do it. Let's see what he can do. Yeah. No, that's what you need. You need people that have a different perspective from what you're used to seeing because you get so stagnant. You get used to seeing the same things and you don't know how to really get outside that box. Mm -hmm. Like, Creed knows literally, I can blink the right way for Jamil to out and Creed's already coming off of the bike. Um, but then we put him on him and he's been really dirty, so we have had to clean up. And it's been cool to see Creed having to work through things, get put in different situations, and even Jamil getting put in different situations. Like he's like, "Oh, okay, this is what I need to do here. This is what I need to do here." And then having seen you, like Creed's doing stuff, and I'm jumping up, and he's like, "Oh, we're good, bro. Just grab the leash, do this." And I'm like, "Oh, shit, this is so cool. This is cool. We get to progress our dogs now." Exactly. Uh, and that's one side of the the downside to being a trainer. You. You work a lot of other people's dogs, and your dog doesn't necessarily get worked. you got to put your dog on the back burner a lot of the times. So I really do appreciate you coming out and working on dogs right. like that. And I know Jamil does because Creed gets tired of biting on me. <laughs> so we're going to work uh, Creed. We're going to do some out stuff on him. We're doing PSA specifically with Creed, but we're going to work on some control stuff. And then we're going to get Boots out here. We've been working on his defensive handler. Uh, technique. It's actually a Mondial ring technique, but we're going to use it in French ring. Uh, do you want to explain why that would be? Well, from my experience, definitely the Mondial ring defensive handler is a lot more challenging for dogs. There's, I mean, if you look it up and watch and compare it, I mean, it's just there's more uh, engagement with the decoy, having the handler do different things, follow the decoy around. Um, where the defensive handler French ring is pretty much standard. I mean, as you get to the higher levels, you can probably pull off more things, but you know, I know a module ring, they'll eventually use multiple decoys, and the dog can only bite one decoy, so it really, it really challenges the dog, and it really challenges, you know, your training and thinking outside the box and seeing what 
what needs to be done for that dog to understand what what's being asked to do. So, I mean, I like French ring defense handler is awesome, but I like also introducing a little bit of that module ring to really like solidify and really you know, that their defensive handler. Yeah, and you said something. You've got to think outside the box when you're working with these dogs. If they get cookie cutter in these patterns, that time when you go to a trial or you take them to a different field, or even some pet obedience, you take your dog to new places and you never thought outside the box, they're not going to know what to do. So you want to be thinking, you need people like this or people you see on the internet. If you see something on the internet, try it with your dog. <laughs> you know, you'll figure out if it works or if it doesn't work, and then you just grow from that. But as always, people, take your time. Do not get frustrated with your dogs if they don't pick up on things the very first time. Just think about when you tried something new. If you just tried a new language, you can't roll your R's. You don't speak the brick pronunciations, whatever it is. It takes you a little bit of time to get there. So do not get in a hurry. So dogs can't even compete until how old in French training? Oh, man, good question. Um, they have to go through their CSAU, which is kind of like a... Uh, um, like a CGC type? Sort of, yeah. Yeah. I think they do have to be a year old to go through that. That's even, then there's obviously no fireworks, more distractions, see how their dog reacts to other dogs, to noises. Obviously, they want to make sure the dog has the temperament, the nerve. You know, they don't want a dog that's just going to fall apart. You know, even though the entry level for French ring is pretty easy, but still, I've seen a lot of dogs just completely, they don't make it that far. So, so what I'm hearing is America needs some more uh, temperament tests for these dogs before. <laughs> It's, it's, yeah, French ring is getting bigger out here in the U.S. It's big in Mexico, um, big in Canada. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely making its way up. And, you know, it's good to see a lot of people, any, any kind of dog sport, anyone wants to, you know, put their dog and, and, and challenge themselves as trainer. It's going to help them become a better trainer. I don't care what sport you do. Even if you do obedience and competition obedience, it's just going to make you a better trainer, better bond with your dog, and that's what it's about, you know. And we, we've talked a couple times, and I heard him talk to Henrik, and he said some stuff, and I'm like, I think that same way. And it's all about the bond with your dog. If you have a bond, your dog is going to want to do more things for you. So you can't force these dogs to do this stuff. A lot of people are like, oh, you're abusing this dog. You're hitting him with a whip. If we hit a dog with a whip or a stick or whatever, or if they fell off of something, they didn't want to do it, they would they would literally stop. It's an animal. You cannot force them to do these things. We motivate them to want to do these things, and they get rewarded, and they understand that there's a reason for it, but we can't force them to it. And to the point where we had one dog, a, a little A, a little A, he just didn't care about biting one day. He was like, nah, I don't want to do this no more. It was probably hot, tired, he just he got burned out, so we just basically gave him about three weeks off, teased him up again, and now he's motivated enough to come out here slipping out of his leash and going and getting the sleep off the ground. So take your time, build the dog up, and it's always okay to take a step back and give your dog some time off. Okay? Let your dog grow up. Their maturity level is very important. Boots are just about to be a year old in September, so I really don't expect too much out of him. He can mess up. He can fail. He can not have perfect bites right now because we're going to continue to build him up to the point where he can do all of these things. And you, know, you can't even start even competing until they're about 15, 16 months old. So we have a lot of time. And time is your friend, especially when you're working with dogs. Or even if you're working with yourself to be a better person, like it's not going to happen overnight. Either. So take time. This is just some talking we're going to do. Now let's get back to the action. So, man, I appreciate you. Is there anybody? Let's get to it. Yeah, no, this is good. This is good, people. So my interviewing skills are terrible, as I was told by our wonderful audience over here. Show the audience. Show the audience. They said, you never introduced him. So please, sir, introduce yourself to everybody. Uh, my name is Adrian Mendez. I've been decoying. started decoying back in 2002 and then got into, started off doing American Bulldogs. Uh, working some American Bulldog show, doing protection stuff as well, do with decoying, and then eventually, about 2010-11, I wanted to do something with decoying. I you know, I've been doing police canine stuff and everything else underneath that. Um, and French ring really, you know, attracted me. So I started training French ring with a club out in Northern California, certified as a level one decoy in 2011, April. Did a few trials. I got to do so many trials before you can go for your level two, and then uh, went on. Uh, achieved my level two status and then pretty much did it up until about 2015-16 and then uh, just, you know, a lot of training stuff, working with different groups, working with different you know different people. As well, I like training, I like deep I like working dogs. So yeah, hopefully you'll be able to keep doing it and as long as I can 
my body stays attached. Yep. Stay healthy. You gotta stay healthy. You gotta stay healthy. Stay healthy. Turn around, stand it. Take off. What? 